All right, another quick video refuting a Calvinist proof text twisted by their eisegesis to teach the false doctrine of limited atonement. And again, you're going to see with all the other verses, I mean, it's almost getting a bit redundant at this point because all the other verses, it's just complete eisegesis. Like I've said in my other videos, there is no scripture that, even when taken out of context, explicitly or implicitly teaches a limit to the extent of the atonement. There is a limit to the application. I'm not a universalist. See, Calvinists have this have this straw man. The the it's the fallacy of a false dilemma. Either you believe uh, limited atonement or you believe universalism. I believe neither. Neither one are aligned with Scripture. The Bible is my final authority. Not not uh, the, you know Calvin or not, not you know this church council or the church has always taught this. That's not my my authority. Luther's not my God. Calvin's not my God. The Word of God is my standard. And there is no verse that even if you take out of context. Uh, seems that even uh, implicitly teaches a limited atonement. Now, the, like I said, the other four points of Calvinism, there are verses they can take out of context that do seem to, to teach it. Uh, that's out of context, by the way. That's the emphasis. Context kills Calvinism in every every little verse they like to use. But with limited atonement, there is no verse that they can use that uh, at all teaches a limit to the to the extent. Okay, plain and simple. And also. Uh, just like the other verses, like I said, we're getting a bit redundant at this point. Ephesians 5, 2 is another verse, and just like the other verses, nowhere is a limit to the extent of the atonement taught anywhere in this in this verse or its context. Ephesians 5, 2, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. I mean, again, where, I mean, it's it just redundant at this point. Where is there, where is this to the exclusion of the non-elect? Because how, see again, it's just total isolation. And really, even with your isolation, Jesus, how do you read, you know, this as a limit to the atonement? You know, it's very clear that Calvinism is a man-centered theology. They're getting their, they're getting their talking points from their theologians. How they read it as, uh, he, you know, he hath also loved us and hath given himself for us and only for us to the exclusion of the elect. That's how they read it. That's called eisegesis, inserting their own theology into the text. It's not in there. And by the way, if you want a good little thing to counter them, uh, Galatians 2.20, because by their standards, by, by their eisegesis, himself for us means only for us and to the exclusion of the elect. Well, you got a bit of a problem there, because if we're going to be consistent with this, which since when has a Calvinist ever been consistent? Um, uh, Galatians 2.20, okay? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, if we're going to be consistent with their eisegesis as this, as saying gave himself for me somehow means only for the church, then I guess I guess apparently Christ only died for the Apostle Paul. Now, you're going to say that's a straw man argument. I'm not saying Calvinists teach that. I'm saying this is what you would have to believe if you're consistent with this eisegetical mindset of gave himself for, you know, the church means only the church when the text never says anything of the kind. I mean, by that same eisegetical mindset, Christ only died for the Apostle Paul, because, you know, Galatians 2.20, he gave himself for me. I mean, this is just what it, what your eisegetical mindset, if you're going to be consistent with how you read the text. So, anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. Calvinism is based off eisegesis. You know, they have to read their own, see, they have this intense pre-commitment to their theology. They cannot just let the scriptures speak for themselves. See, I've heard it said that Calvinism is a is or especially limited atonement is a doctrine in search of a text. You know, they have to, they come to this Bible already believing in pre in limited atonement as a doctrinal fact before reading the verses, and they have to look for a verse to back to back up their point. That's called eisegesis. It's the pre commitment, and you have to look for a verse, and then you end up butchering a verse to teach your doctrine, plain and simple. So anyway, more videos coming in the future. Calvinism is Gnostic heresy. Is all that it is. It's just Gnosticism by another name. Plain and simple. Don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.